Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today we are going to have a lot of fun talking about the very confusing topic of DPI and PPI. There's a lot of misconceptions about that and misleading information on the internet. So here are some service messages from our online experts. Before you print an image, you have to set it to 300 DPI to get good quality. No. This is not how that works. But, but if you want to have your image look nice on your website or on your screen, it has to be 72 DPI. No, this is again not how that works. But, but let me hear is a final nugget of gold. A lower DPI image has less quality than a higher DPI image because it has less DPI. No, again, it's not true. This is not how any of that works. So how does any of that work? Let me explain. And I will start with the very simple question. What is the size of the color red? And you're absolutely right to tell me that red is a color and it doesn't have a size. Now the same goes for a pixel. A pixel is a virtual unit and does not have a size. So then when does it get a size? Well, this is when you want to look at your image because at some point in your life, you want to see the beautiful photos you have taken. And at that point, you decide how big that image is going to be on your screen or as a print. At that moment, you have to assign a pixel size. So this is what DPI or PPI are actually doing. And there is two different ways to set up DPI. Now, before we go into that, I also have to explain to you the very confusing word resolution, because in a lot of online texts, this is used interchangeably for two different things without actually telling you there is the output resolution. This is the physical resolution of your screen or of your print. And then you have the image resolution. This is the count of pixels, the number of pixels that your file has. These two resolutions are completely different from each other. So let's look into the two different ways to set a DPI value. Let's go with the non-destructive one first. You have a set amount of pixels. This is the resolution of your image and you want to assign a DPI value to that. So the number of pixels stays the same, but the DPI value changes. How does that work? Let's say you have an image and this image is 1000 pixels wide, but you want to have only 100 pixels per inch. So when you assign that value, what is changing the number of pixels or the number of inch again a pixel doesn't have a size so you assign at that moment how wide the picture is you have a thousand pixels you're only using 100 per inch so you're ending up with a 10 inch wide image with a 100 dpi output resolution. Now here is the second method. This is the destructive method. It is called resampling. In a destructive process, what happens is the original image is destroyed and a new image is created instead of that. So in this case, we are keeping the size, but we are changing the pixel count. Remember in the first method, we kept the pixel number, but we changed the amount of inches. Now we do the opposite. We have a fixed inch size and we want to fit our pixels into that inch size. So again, we have 1000 pixels, but we only want to have a one inch picture with 100 DPI. So the only solution here is to get rid of 900 of these pixels. Of course, we are not just throwing them away. The software is looking at all of the thousand pixels and tries to figure out how it can merge them together until only 100 pixels is left. 
So now that we understand these two different methods, we can look at one of the myths at the beginning that tells you that a lower DPI image has less quality. Is the DPI the culprit here? No, it is not. The resampling is the culprit here because you yourself decide to throw away the pixels that are in your image. So let's now go to the second myth where I said you need 72 DPI for a picture on a website or on your screen. Why is this wrong? For example, the new iPhone 13 Pro has a PPI value of 460. This is the maximum amount of pixels this display is able to show you. Now 460 is not a multiple of 72 and it's also not a multiple of 96. This has nothing to do with that. Here is a second example. You have a tablet in your hand that is 4K and it is small and you have a 50 inch screen on your wall that is also 4K. Both of them have the same image resolution in the amount of pixels but completely different PPI resolutions because of the sizes of the screen, but both show you a 4K image. So where does the 72 DPI myth come from? Back in the day, decades ago, screens actually had 72 DPI. And at that point, that made sense. Today, you have so many different screen sizes and devices and on top of that, you can change the resolution of your screen that the PPI is changing with every device and with every device setting. So let's come to the first myth. You need to set your image to 300 DPI before you want to print it. Why is that not true? Would an image look bad if you would print it at 20 DPI? Not really. Does it have to do with the size of the print? Not really. The actual deciding factor here is how far your eyes will be from the print afterwards. Do you hold it in your hands close to your eyes? Do you hang it on a wall a little bit further from your eyes? Or is it an ad that is next to the road where you're really far away from it? This viewing distance decides how many DPI you need. Close to you, you see more detail, so you need more DPI. Usually, we use 300 DPI because this gives us a good result and at the same time it is cost effective. But if you have an art print, you can also print it at 400, 500, 600 DPI with a better printing method on better material. Now, if you have an image where you stand further away from the image, like you have a poster or like I said, an ad on the side of the road, you will stand further away from that print so you can go with much less DPI. For example, these huge ads on the side of the road, they can get away with as little as 20 DPI. Why does this work? Consider your field of vision. When you hold something close to your face, it takes up a lot of field of vision. But if it's further away, even though it is a lot bigger, it takes up the same amount or even a smaller amount of your field of vision. So all of that information is compressed down to that small region. And at that point, you still see a nice crisp image, even though it has a lot less DPI. So this is how DPI actually is decided. Also, there's a third factor. This is actually the material you print on. And of course, here, the reasoning is that when you have a very smooth surface, you can print a lot of information on there so you can use a high DPI value. But if you have a very coarse surface that can't handle that amount of information, you can use a lower DPI value. Now I want to show you something inside of Affinity Photo. Here I have a file that is TIFF and it has 140 megabyte as you can see. Let's go here to properties. It tells you the dimensions in pixels, the width and height. It also tells you that this file has a 72 DPI resolution. Now let's go over to Affinity Photo, make a new document here. 
for the print size and I will choose a very small size, A10. You can see it is 26 millimeters by 37 millimeters. This is set up at 300 dpi, which is the output dpi. Create and now I will drag my image in here. There we go. And you can see the image is very big. So let's resize this down so we get as many of the original pixels as we can. I will rotate this. I will set it up like this. You can already see when I zoom into this image, it has a very low resolution. Now, why is that? As you remember, the original image has 72 dpi, but this canvas has 300 dpi, but still the image here looks very pixelated. The original is very sharp and crisp because the canvas is smaller. Now, again, I want to remember you, this file has 140 megabyte. Let's go here to file and export, and we are going to choose PDF PDF for print. You can see here raster DPI 300 DPI. Now it says in brackets next to this, nothing will be rasterized. So probably we expect the file to have 140 megabyte because this is the size of the pixel image that we have dragged into our canvas. Let's click here on export and call this test. And let's see how big that file is. Here is the file and you can see it has 793 kilobyte, not 140 megabyte. Let's open this up in our browser and you can see we are getting a very small image. It has 300 DPI. It's still a small image because the canvas is small. Now let's go back to Affinity Photo and look again at this export dialog. Here it says again in brackets, nothing will be rasterized. So why has the image been downsampled? Why is it so small from the size and also from the kilobyte? The reason for that is because nothing will be rasterized applies to the text and to the vector shapes, not to your pixel information. Now let's look again at our canvas and you can see I can resize this image any way I want. I can rotate it. I can overlap it with the side and make it larger like this. Absolutely no problem. In all of these cases, Affinity Photo will do the work for us to convert this into the 300 DPI needed in the print. You do not have to do any calculations and make it pixel perfect in 300 DPI. Affinity Photo will do that for you when you export. The only thing you need to take into consideration is that the pixel resolution, the amount of pixels in your image is enough to cover that space that you want to print in that DPI amount. And finally, let me repeat again, a pixel does not have a size. DPI is the price you pay in pixels per inch. There are two different methods to set DPI. One is non-destructive and the other one is destructive, the resampling. The way you decide how many DPI you need for your print is based on how far away you will be from the end result. Is it in your hand? high DPI, is it somewhere away on a wall, low DPI. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope I could clear up some of your confusions. And of course, feel free to discuss in the comments, but stay nice and civil. See you soon. Bye.